10 haunted houses, 2 live shows and 5 scare zones. Halloween Horror Nights at Universal Orlando Resort is a literal monster of an event. Hey, this is Stu from Out and Back Travel. I make videos to help inspire your own theme park adventures. Coming up in this episode, let's get our spooks on for Halloween Horror Nights 31. Bump in the night, stuff in the face, right in the boo hole. Halloween Horror Nights at Universal Orlando Resort returns for its 31st year in 2022, with haunted houses, scare zones and shows guaranteed to give you the willies. It's always those surprise pop-ups that cause the biggest thrills. Universal has a long history of horror, dating back to their classic monster films from the 1930s, so they really know the art and the craft of the scare. What differentiates Halloween Horror Nights from other Halloween scare events is the artistry. Unlike other, more extreme haunted events, the actors won't touch or grab you. This is a theatrical experience, darling, with fully immersive sets and amazing detailed backstories and lore that add a whole extra level to the experience. So what do you need to know going into the event? I'm going to cover the basics, so here's a quick fire, or should that be jump scare round, of frequently asked questions. Where is the event? Halloween Horror Nights takes place in Universal Studios, Florida. Do I need a separate ticket for my regular day ticket? Yes. Halloween Horror Nights is what's known as a hard ticket event, so you'll need to buy an additional ticket. What time does Halloween Horror Nights take place? The gates open at 6.30pm and it finishes at 2am. Will the actors jump out at me? Yes. Due to the scare zones throughout the park, it would be impossible to get into the park or go around it without going through at least one of the scare zones, so at some point someone will probably jump out at you. How big are the groups inside the houses? Unlike other haunt events where you may go through a haunted house in groups or small numbers, the houses at Halloween Horror Nights are a long continuous conga line. It's a necessity due to the popularity of the event. So will that suck and will I see the scares coming? Absolutely not. They designed the mazes to keep you jumping and keep you guessing. Just because an actor got the person in front of you doesn't mean somebody else won't get you from another angle or direction, so don't worry, you're going to get some scares. Are there regular theme park rides available? Yes, selected theme park rides are available, including Transformers, Escape from Gringotts, Men in Black and Hollywood Rip Ride Rockets. You could do these during a normal park day though, so think about how effective you're using your event time and make sure you prioritise doing the special things that are there for the event though. Can I wear a costume? No. Universal wants its guests to be able to differentiate between the actors in the scare zones and the regular day guests, so there's no costumes allowed. Can I bring my children? Universal very clearly states this event is not suitable for children and don't actually sell a children's ticket because of that. I think it's going to be very different for each child and it's going to be on your own parental discretion. Just remember that it isn't a safe way in or out the park without going through one of the scare zones. Okay then that wraps up our jump scare questions. Let's dig a little deeper with some tips for getting the most out of the event. First up, always buy your tickets in advance. As is always the case, it's worth buying your tickets in advance. You'll pay more by buying them on the gate. The online advance ticket prices start from $71 versus $123 on the gate, and as it's America, don't forget these prices are plus tax. If you wait into the night, you also run the risk of the event selling out, and you're wasting your available time inside the event. Remember, time is money. Plan multiple nights. It's a lot to try and attempt the event in one night. Realistically, you need at least two nights, but going for longer takes the stress and pressure away. There's four options for multi-night tickets, which are Rush of Fear, $129.99 plus tax, valid for admission the first four weeks of the event, not valid for any days in October. So this is your September only pass. And this is only six bucks more than the gate price for one night, so definitely worth considering. The next option is Frequent Fear. This is $179.99 plus tax which is valid for admission the first weekend of the event and then every Wednesday, Thursday and Sunday of the event. So it blocks out the Fridays and Saturdays basically. You then have Frequent Fear Plus, which is $219.99 plus tax, valid for admission every Sunday through Friday. So basically every night apart from Saturdays, although you do get the first Saturday of the event, which will be September the 3rd, and the last Saturday of the event, which would be October the 29th. 
And then you have Ultimate Frequent Fear Pass, which is $329.99 plus tax, which is valid for admission every night of the event. You can then add Express Pass onto each of these options. When should I go then? Well, the busiest days are historically Fridays and Saturday nights. As the event progresses into October, the crowds will build up. So really you want to do midweeks in September to avoid the main crowds. However, with the current demand, there isn't really a quiet season anymore in any of the Orlando theme parks. So you should always anticipate some queues. Even on the quiet nights in 2021, the queues still reached over an hour. As a general rule of thumb, if you look at the calendar pricing on the Universal website, the higher the single night ticket price, the more crowded that night will likely to be. What is Stay and Scream? On the event nights, Universal Studios Florida will close at 5pm. It has a quick costume change and reopens for Halloween Horror Nights at 6.30pm. If you have a day ticket to the theme park, you can join the designated holding areas which are known as Stay and Scream, where you wait inside the theme park until the event opens. The two main Stay and Scream sections are Springfield and the New York area by Finnegan's Bar. Additional areas may pop up as the event gets busier, but those are the main two. There'll be restrooms and food and drink will be available so you won't get bored or go thirsty. The main perk of Stay and Scream is of course you'll be the first in line to enter selected haunted houses and the house will be determined by the Stay and Scream location you choose. With Stay and Scream it is possible to get through two to three houses before that crowd search from the main gate opening reaches into the park. And don't be the bell end who uses their express pass when Stay and Scream finishes and the wait time is five minutes. Seriously, if you have Express Pass, please save it for later in the evening and get some bonus house time before those crowds build up. What is Scream Early? If you only have a Halloween Horror Nights ticket, you can upgrade to Scream Early for $35 plus tax. This allows you to enter Universal Studios Florida to join Stay and Scream areas between 3 and 5 p.m. They strictly cut this off at 5 p.m. So if you're any later, like 5 or 1 p.m., you're gonna be denied access. So get there on time. Remember, this is only required if you don't have a regular day theme park ticket. Next up then, we've got to keep ourselves comfortable. It's gonna be a long night. The event runs until 2 a.m. after all. There's gonna be lots of walking. You should see the distance on those few switchbacks. So as always with any theme park day, make sure you have good footwear on it as you're definitely gonna be getting your steps in. Dress in layers, that full weather in Orlando can go from hot and humid, then as the sun sets it can really cool down. So it's good to have some light layers to put on and think about a light jacket or an umbrella for the rain showers. As always, it's the balance of being prepared and packing as lightly as possible as you're gonna be carrying this around with you all evening. When the event starts at 6.30 p.m. it's still gonna be bright sunshine the quick transition from the outside queue stepping inside the darkest depths of a haunted house can be quite jarring. So I recommend wearing sunglasses and taking them off as you step inside to help with your eyes adjusting to the darkness. And of course, make sure you keep yourself hydrated. Don't forget the food locations and the Coke Freestyle machines offer free drinking water. Of course, be sure to responsibly binge on those signature cocktails. Will I need Express Pass? Well, only you can answer that, as it isn't a cheap upgrade. Especially if you're visiting the event over a couple of nights, it is possible to complete it without Express. Just be prepared for the long lines. The Express Pass will allow you one-time entry per haunted house. You won't skip the line completely. As a general rule of thumb, you'll skip at least 50% of the main waiting time. So if the queue for a house is three hours, you'll still be waiting 90 minutes in the Express line as we experienced for the Stranger Things house a few seasons back. It's also worth downloading the Universal Lando app to keep an eye on those key times, and it's also good for mobile ordering food at select locations, which can also help to avoid some wait. It's worth noting that if you are staying in one of the Universal Premier Hotels, so Hard Rock Portofino or Royal Pacific, even though you do get Universal Express Pass, for use in the theme parks in the regular day, as Halloween Horror Nights is a special event, the Express Pass doesn't work. Now speaking from my own point of view as an international guest to the event, I do budget for an Express Pass multi-night ticket when I do Halloween Horror Nights. As I'm visiting from overseas, it's worth the extra money to take the stress and pressure out of ensuring that I'll experience all the houses and all the event has to offer. Unfortunately, I'm not visiting Halloween Horror Nights 31 myself this year, 
However, Jay and Zach from the Out and Back Science Lab will be attending. They are both virgins and they've never been to Halloween Horror Nights before. So it's going to be great guiding them around the event from the studio here in London, living out my full Kenneth Kendall fantasy. Hopefully in a few weeks time we'll be able to share their research from experiencing all the event has to offer and I'm so excited for them to get over there and experience it. So in summary then, make sure you buy your tickets in advance, plan for multiple nights to take the pressure off experiencing everything, stay and scream, always stay and scream, get yourself inside the park and ahead of those queues waiting before the event opens, dress in layers, ensure you're comfortable for the changing weather conditions and lots of walking, stay hydrated and of course have fun. Are you heading to Halloween Horror Nights 31 in 2022? Which of the houses or scare zones are you looking forward to the most? Do you have any Halloween Horror Nights classic tips and tricks that I've missed? Please share them in the comments below so we can all learn from each other's experience and have the best possible time at the event. And until next time, as always, stay safe on the way out and back.